These behavior patterns, or archetypes as Jung called them, help us quickly and comfortably size up other people. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Even at the movies, once we've identified someone as an archetypical hero, we can better predict his behavior. When we see a movie like Star Wars, we're already right there. There's that immediate connection with the various characters in the movie. The whole idea of of Darth Vader and the whole idea of archetypal evil and Luke Skywalker as the young hero. Um, the, these are mythological themes. That's what attracts us to going to movies. In the real world, many of us unconsciously play out these archetypical roles the nurturing mother, the good son, the successful business person. But often there is a more complex, unique person inside of us that is struggling to be recognized. Most young people today develop, I think, a pretty mature sense of how to look and act at the right times. And boy, they're quick to recognize somebody who doesn't. Jung stressed that in order to be truly happy, we must stop trying to be who we think we should be or who everyone expects us to be and figure out who we really are. I think at one time or another every girl wants to be a cheerleader and if you're just out for the prestige, if you don't really care, the other kids spot you as a phony right away. For years, Jung himself had played out archetypical roles. He had devoted himself to following in Freud's footsteps, all the while suppressing the inner voice that was telling him to go his own way. After his many years of soul-searching, Carl Jung had found his true self. Promoting individuality became a cornerstone of Jung's work, and with the end of World War I, a new and more open society emerged that was ready to embrace Jung's ideas. When he first published his theories in 1921, the book was an immediate international bestseller. In Psychological Types, Jung offered a system that would help people better understand different personalities and appreciate the qualities that make each of them unique. He coined terms like introvert and extrovert and explained how someone who is shy thinks differently from someone who is outgoing. Jung called this process of identifying and labeling different kinds of personalities typology. Typology helps an awful lot of explaining the difference in functioning and that it is, it's okay to be different, it's okay to function differently. For the public, finding out what personality type they were became the rage. And back in Zurich, Jung's workload exploded. At the age of 47, Carl Jung had become internationally famous and patients from around the world were making appointments up to a year in advance with Jung. He had more patience than he could handle. Uh, everybody wanted something from him. Artists and poets and writers of all sorts were attracted to him. And if they had creative blocks or they had issues with alcoholism or depression or lack of meaning, they would come to him. But Jung's popularity didn't come without its share of negative attention. In the 1930s, the world began marching to war once again. In a divided Europe, some of Jung's theories would become increasingly controversial. He wrote about the differences between Aryan psychology, Jewish psychology, and Chinese psychology. This was taken as Jung being anti-Semitic, but Jung said, well, look, any sensible person will see that there are differences in psychology between Jews, Aryans, and Chinese. Jung felt that if everyone could learn to understand each other's differences, there would be less conflict in the world. But ironically, Jung's theories were adopted by the Nazis, who twisted them to suit their own agenda. Jung sparked controversy in 1933, when he agreed to take over as head of an international society for psychotherapy. At the time, most of the group's members worked in Germany and were facing Nazi domination. 
Jung wrote that he wanted to help his German colleagues keep their relatively new profession alive, despite the suppression. But some viewed Jung's efforts as collaboration. At the time, Germany was the predominant country in Europe before World War II. Everything science, philosophy. So Jung felt it was very important to maintain psychotherapy in Germany if at all possible. So he worked with the Nazis from 1933 to 1940. And people have not forgiven him for doing that. Over the years, Jung vehemently denied being an anti-Semite and supporting the Nazis. But controversy remains. Toward the end of his life, Jung turned away from treating individual patients, traveling and lecturing. A true introvert at heart, he spent increasing amounts of time at home on Lake Zurich, surrounded by his family. When his supporters began urging Jung to start an institute that would teach and spread his theories, Jung only reluctantly agreed. He had an allergy against following. He, you know, he didn't want you to follow uh, a guru. He didn't even want you to follow, you know, Christ. Uh, he didn't want to follow. He wanted you to become an individual. So he didn't want to people to follow him. But he realized people wanted to learn and study, you know, his ideas and his thoughts, and he had no choice. Eventually, societies bearing Jung's name sprang up from San Francisco and Kiev to Singapore and Argentina. Jung himself spent his final years writing and enjoying a simple life. He died at his home in 1961. He was 85 years old. Despite his wishes, a definite cult of personality developed around Carl Jung after his death. With the age of flower power and hippies came a whole new generation that was captivated by Jung's message, which included terms like age of Aquarius and new age. The new age, he meant, in the most basic terms, after the end of the Second World War, new ways of thinking, new possibilities for society. He felt that politics was evolving, that uh, the relationship between men and women was evolving. He had a sense that everything was going to change and change profoundly. More recently, Jung's original work with personality types led to perhaps his most enduring and practical legacy, the Myers-Briggs test. This tool helps schools offer career guidance and it enables corporate America to better match an employee to a specific job. It took American pragmatism to basically put his theory into a test, the Myers-Briggs typology test. And it's the most used test in the United States. Every year, more than a million people take that test to find out, uh, you know, how do I function? Carl Jung was ahead of his time in many ways. Today, decades after his death, his once revolutionary theories are now part of the fabric of our culture. Jung has maintained and increased his popularity because he speaks to the kinds of issues in terms of meaning, in terms of spirituality that, that people are, are looking for. We are a society that values the individual more readily than ever before. And terms like introvert and extrovert are a part of everyone's vocabulary. In this way, Carl Jung himself has become part of our collective unconscious. He said, I have to follow my own 